Alrighty, perfect. So morning. Today we're going to do we're going to do a class on the neck and the head, and I know it's a bit dark. Um, so I'm possibly going to to move the camera at some point. Um, but what I wanted to focus today is a little bit in kind of these sensations of kind of the cervical spine that we normally have when we crouch quite a lot. And this class is also meant to introduce people into, into headstand, into sirsasana, and how to go safely into sirsasana. And there's quite a lot of people that cannot do headstand uh, at all because they have high blood pressure. So people with high blood pressure, uh, with things like glaucoma or uh, with diabetes, sirsasana is perhaps not the best host. Uh, so I'll give you options to go into, into it. And there's a lot of benefits from sirsasana. It, it allows you to kind of clean your organism. And personally for me, it's a way of, it's also mentally, it's a way of seeing the world in a different way. You are literally seeing the world upside down. So it allows you to change your perception. And finally, it's just a fun pose to do. Um, but at the same time, as I say, there is, there is a lot of, things that may not, or yeah, there is lots of characteristics within the pose that make it a little bit of challenging when, when you have certain predispositions. So if you have high blood pressure or in your, your moon, uh, you're a woman and you're like in your period, maybe it's not the best time to do it. And you can, you can take any of the, of the other options I'll give you. But also Sirsasana for me is a really it has been a very good way to strengthen my, my neck. So let's start with the pose or let's start with the class. So for the class, you just find your comfortable sitting position in your mat. Make sure both seat bones are fully down into the mat. If it's okay with you, close your eyes. Bring your hands to the back, interlace the hands behind and try to find the floor, open the chest. Try to keep both knees down into the ground as you open to the back. On the exhale, open the arms. Interlace your right hand underneath your left. Garuda pose with your hand, Garudasana. On the inhale, Lift your shoulders up, bring your chin towards your chest, opening the shoulder blades. Exhale, release. Open the arms again. Bring your right hand down into the ground. Circle the other hand around and move towards the side. Find a nice opening into the left side of your body. Inhale, open up all the way. Looking between your hands, up, 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 get long. Exhale, release your hands. Interlace the opposite finger behind your back. This time, try to lift the hands as high as possible. Lift your chest. Maybe look up into the sky, into the ceiling. Shave the ground back, open the chest, bring the shoulder blades together. On the inhale, open your arms, left arm underneath the right, Garudasana. Bring your chin towards your chest and bring the elbows up. Open the shoulder blades. Release, open your arms again. This time, left hand down, right hand to the side. Open the left, right side of the body. Circle your hand in front of this time. Move towards the other side. Open to the right side. Open into the left side, sorry. Same thing once again. Circle through the horizon. Move to the other side. 
kind of making half circles. So start making these a little bit more flowy. Integrate your own breath. Try to make it or as slow or and as fast as you need as you move side to side and stretch your right and left body. As you move forward, crouch. As you move to the side, open the chest. So crouch to the front, open the chest as you move to the side. Crouch to the front, open. We're gonna to try to make this into a full circle. So as you move to the left side, open, 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 open to the other side. Push your body to the other, and then continue the circle. So we're gonna start circles towards the left. Now towards the right, the same thing. Half circle towards the right. Open the chest. Move the other hand to the other side. Open the chest. Then complete the circle. Open. Open the chest. Side. Move inwards. Open the chest. Open up. Move to the other side. Open the chest. Release the hand and last one. Keep the hands close if it's good for you. Interlace the fingers again into your back. Open the chest. This time, bring your hands towards your right hip crease. So kind of on top of your hips. Yeah. And then as you do this, you start bringing your head towards the right shoulder. You're going to feel a nice stretch into the side of your body. You can go low and high. You can start moving your head in different directions, exploring any pain into your shoulder, any pain into your neck. This is a great pose to do in the morning, a great pose to do during the day, whenever you have the time, in the plane, in the car. If you're feeling a headache, if you're feeling some pain in the neck, this pose helps me every single time. You can either choose to stay kind of still, or you can explore the movement with your chin. You can move the chin up and down, explore where the movement feels better in your neck. Choose a place where it feels nice. Stay there for three, for two, and one. Release, open your arms, send the arms to the back, open the chest. Now interlace the opposite finger on top. So go through your normal interlacing and then change it. And then bring the hands towards the left side. Same thing, keep the elbows hugging towards the center and back move the head towards the left side. So as we did on the right side, just feel the stretch and opening into the side of your body. Open, 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 open into your neck. Explore any sensation. And release your hands down. Make circles with your hips from your hips. Release any tension you may have there. At the end of the class, we're going to do a bit of a meditation here. For now, just make the circles as wide 
or as small as you need to. Beautiful. So today we're going to learn new pose. So let's bring your hands forward, come into your knees and move into your mat. So we're going to learn two new things. We're going to learn a new kind of Surya Namaskar, a new sun salutation. The sun, this sun salutation is based on uh, the teachings of a teacher called Patrick Fish. And we're going to learn a new pose. We're going to start with a new pose. So tuck your toes, move towards the back, sit into your toes, and then bring your hands against your heels. Open the chest. I'm going to show you how it looks on the side. Open the chest, open the chest, open the chest, as much as you can. On the exhale, move your forehead down towards the knees, get it as close as you can. Then as you pull the head down, you bring your hips up as much as you can, keeping the hands into the heels. This is for Chash and Kasana. Again, another amazing pose, to stretch the neck, you stay in the back of the neck. It's a great modification for uh, Sushasana, for your head stand. Keep pushing forward and up. Feel the stretch into the back. And slowly, very slowly release. And let's start with the Sriya Namaskar. So the Sriya Namaskar, as we say, comes from uh, the teaching of Patrick Fish and it's a bit different. We're going to explore it. So let's start into hands and knees. Top the toes. Keeping the knees bent. Move back, move your chest towards your knees. Lift the knees as we did last class and extend the legs. Now we're facing up. On the next inhale, bring the heels up. Push your chest forward until you come into a plank. Options here, stay here, hold, or go halfway down into a push-up and lift. Now move back, bring the knees down on top of the toes, look in between your hands, place the elbows down, and imagine you're moving through water and forward as you lift your chest up. Open the chest, bring the knees down, tuck your toes. We're going to incorporate Shashankasana here. Grab the heels, open the chest, bring your forehead towards your knees, bring the hips up. Exhale, release. Hands forward, bring the knees up slightly. Chest towards the knees, extend the legs, downward facing dog. We're going to do this two more times so you can see the flow and feel how it, uh, how it feels into your body. This is going to be our vinyasa today. So once again, bring the heels up, move forward into plank, feel like you are away. Open the chest, look forward, stay here into plank, or bend the elbows, go halfway down, and push, move back, bring the knees down, elbows down, look in between your hands, swim through water, forward, open the chest, bend the knees, keep the knees down, tuck your toes, Move back, grab the heels, open the chest. Move the forehead down towards your knees. Bring the heels up, chest and thighs and up. Inhale, open up, hands forward. Imagine you're like swinging and pushing the hands forward. Downward, facing dog. Beautiful, last time, we're gonna repeat it last time. Bring the heels up, bend the knees. Imagine. You're pushing your body forward like a wave. Look forward, plank, stay here, or push up. Move back. Bring the knees down, forearms down. Look in between your hands. Swim in between the hands. Open the chest. 
Bring the knees down, tug your toes. Move your chest inward, open your chest outward. Bring the forehead down towards your knees. Hips up, exhale, release. Hands up, imagine you're swimming and moving into water. Downward facing dog, beautiful. So this is going to be our vinyasa. We're going to explore it into the sequence. For now, as we're in downward facing dog, start getting movement into your down dog, bend the knees. My recommendation for today is that you do a little bit of spine undulations on the downward facing dog. So what you do is you bend one knee, move both of your hips towards that side of the body, and then as you extend, change. So you're making kind of a shape, an A shape into your hips, into these bugs. <sighs> Use the breath to find space. It doesn't matter if your heels are down or high up. What it matters is that sensation into your spine and the feeling of release into your joints, into your fascia. And slowly look forward and start to move, to move forward. Walk in between your hands and release. Grab opposite elbows. Feel how the weight is really pulling you down. We're going to do another spine undulation here, also coming from Patrick Bish. So what you're going to do is keep the knees bent and keep the spine crouch and chin towards your chest. As you move up, move your chest forward, sit into an invisible chair, lift, open the chest, bring the elbows into a cactus as you open the chest. Then as you move forward, start to crouch your back, once again, sit into the chair, open the chest, move up, hands into your cactus, move down, and again, crouch, open up, hand to your hands, and move down. And as you open up, open the chest, hand to your hands, Release down, hands to the back. Open your hands that time. Cactus your arms, send your chest forward, crouch and breathe. Let's start our sequence. So the inhale, look forward. Ardha Uttanasana, bring the hands down, bring your right foot to the back. Your left foot to the back, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift both heels up. We're going to bring both heels towards the right side, feeling the stretch into the left side of your body. You're going to lift your right foot and bring the right foot towards your right elbow. It doesn't matter if it doesn't touch and then towards your left elbow, and then release the, head, the leg towards the left side, kind of making a twist here. Open your arm, open the chest. Bring your hand forward, feel the stretch. The first sequence, we're going to do it very slow, and we're going to flow more and more into it. Circle your hand forward, release it down. Move your chest forward and down so you feel the stretch into the IT band of your right leg. Bring the knee to the chest, open up into 
a, a single downward facing dog or three legged downward facing dog. Bend the knee and this time move towards the other side. So now we put you towards the left side, open the chest. Wide feet. Bring the knee towards your forearm or your elbow towards your forearm. Then open again. Two times more. Knee towards your forearm. Then open. Last time, knee towards the forearm. Then open. Release your hand down. And as you release the hand down, bring your knee towards your chest and try to release the foot all towards the front. Do it as slow as you need to. Now, right hand stays down. Left arm circles. Extended side angle. Stay here and enjoy. Parsvakonasana. Circle your arm in front of your face. Move up and reverse the warrior. Bend the front knee. Once again, breathe and enjoy. Extend the legs. Open and move forward. Triangle. Open the chest here. Feel how your hand goes against your kind of inner neck. And from your pelvis, from your pubic bone, you open the chest. Circle your hand forward once again. This time, try to find your, your uh, Ardashandrasana or half moon. If you lose the balance that you did, you just recover it. Slowly circle your hands again. Bring your left hand down. Open the other arm up, twisting. Now bring the left knee to your chest and try to lift without using your hands. Bring the knee towards your chest. Opposite hand goes into the knee, twist. Stay into your twist. Hands into the center. Bring your foot back, bring your foot back, bring your foot back. Release the hands down. Allow the movement into your hips to go even deeper. So both hands down. Circle around your hips. Bring your back knee down. Inhale, open. Both hands up. Bend the hands into your, into a cactus pose. Open the chest. Then as you move forward, swing. Once again, hands up. Bring the hands into either side, open the chest, and then forward, imagine you're swimming into a pool. Last time, hands up. Bend the elbows, cactus pose, open the chest, then swing forward. Inhale, both hands up. Release your left hand down. Try to grab the back foot with your right hand. Twisting again here. Open the chest. And now try to move your hips back and forward until you find a sweet spot where you want to stay. Focus more on opening your chest. Try to move your heel towards your buttocks, but at the same time, kick strongly with your leg. So there is engagement and flexibility at the same time. Just slowly release down, release down. Both hands down into the ground, shove your back toe. Three legged dog. 
bring both feet down, you're going to do our vinyasa. So inhale forward, imagine you're away. Plank, stay here, or small chaturanga, small puja. Move back, bring the knees down, forearms down, look in between your hands. Swing forward, open the chest. Knees down, tuck your toes. As you move back, grab your heels, open the chest. Move forward, forearms, uh, sorry, forehead towards your knees. Bring the hips up, Chachankasana. Inhale, hands up, bend the elbows. Swing forward, downward facing duck. Beautiful. Bring both heels up. We're going to the other side. Bring both feet toward your left side. Left foot lifts. Bring the left foot towards your right triceps. Uh, your left triceps, sorry. Now, twist it. Right triceps. Extend the leg and open up. into this twist and open chest pose. Support your triangle pose. Swing your hand forward. Bring the hips level. Feel the stretch into your IT band, your left IT band. Bring the knee to the chest. Push back, three legs down. Bend the knee once again, and then move towards the opposite side, towards the right side. Allow the foot to move down. Bring your hips down, elbow to the floor, to the knee, and open the chest. Two more, knee, elbow, open the chest, knee, elbow, and open the chest. Slowly, Circle your hand forward. You can try to keep it up as you move your foot forward or bring the hand down and slowly, slowly move your foot forward on the outside of your hand. Back heel goes into the ground. Place your left hand down. Circle your arm in front of your face. Extend the side up. Stay here, feel the stretch into the hips. Try to open your chest once again. Circle your arm in front of your face. Lift, extend the leg, bend the knee again. Reverse your warrior. Now extend the front leg. As you move forward, 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 find your trikonasana. Focus on opening the hips and from the hips, opening the chest. Bring your hand, your right hand into your hip. Look towards the right, left side corner of your mat. Start moving your weight forward, forward, forward until you find your Adha Chandrasana, your half moon lifts the back leg. Keep your hand where it is, look down or maybe open your arm up. Look at your Find a bit of balance here if you lose it. As I did before, you recover it. Slowly circle your hand forward. Bring that hand, uh, bring your right hand down into the ground. Lead the other hand for Pashrita. Um, or the Chandrasana. Or reverse half side moon. The knee towards the chest. Slowly try to find balance. Bring the knee towards your chest, hands into prayer. Left hand into the right knee. From here, find your twist. Twist as deep or as shallow as you need. Circle both hands forward. And find a little bit of a warrior three. 
Really, really, really slowly. Allow your foot to go back. Hands down. Move back and forward. Finally, stretch into your hips and your spine. You can make small circles here if you need to. Release your back knee down. Allow your right hand to stay. Open the hip. Inhale, lift both hands up. And we're going to make the undulations once again. So bending elbows coming to kind of a character pose. Open the chest. Then as you move forward, you might do your swimming into the pool. Hands up. Bend the elbows, cactus your left, your arms. Swing forward. Hands up. Half with your arms. Swing forward. Last time, hands up. Back to your arms. Swing forward. Inhale, hands up. Stretch into your front leg. Release your right hand down. Circle your arm. Find your left foot, your right foot, sorry, and open the chest. As we did on the other side, try to bring your foot towards your buttocks. At the same time, strongly push away. So there is engagement into your glutes, there's engagement into your quad, but at the same time, you're finding flexibility and space. Release both hands forward, tuck your back toes, foot all the way back, three legged jump. Release the foot down. Beautiful. Your vinyasa, the way we're doing it today. To so bend the knees, bring the chin towards the chest, imagine you're away, find your plank. Push up for Chaturanga. Knees down, look in between your hands, forearms down, swing forward, open chest, bend the knees, bring the knees down, tuck your toes, move back, grab your heels, open the chest, move your forehead towards your knees, lift your hips up, release them. Hands up and cactus and send them forward. Imagine you're swimming into a pool or a lake or the sea. Then we're facing the second time we're going to do the sequence. So lift your heels up. Release both heels towards the right side. Right knee towards your right form. Now Left form. Release it towards the side. Open the chest. Fall in triangle. I don't remember how this pose is closed. Circle your arm around. Move into this triangle or this falling triangle, but with both hips even. Feel the stretch into your right IT band. Bend the knee, send it into the chest, open into a three legged dog. Bend the knee once again, and this time allow the foot to go towards the left side. Bring the elbow towards the knee, then open three times. Knee, elbow, open. Knee towards the elbow, and open. Your choice, you can keep the hand up or you can bring it down, but slowly you're going to bring the back foot, the right foot into your chest. And if you can, release it next to your hands. Opening up, setting up for the, for the opening poses. Release your right hand down, extended side angle. Sit the Parshvukanasana. 
Circle your hands in front of your face. Really move into that extension all the way from your back, um, from the back of your toes, from the outside of your foot, all the way towards the front. Go towards your hands. Circle your hands, arm in front of you, and then reverse. If you need, extend the leg first, then bend. Once again, extend the leg, move forward, release the hand down, triangle pose, feel the opening of the chest, look forward, your left hand into your left hip, look towards the right side corner of your mat, and slowly float your foot back to up, Find your arch and chandrasana, your half moon if you need a block or a book. Forward, you can bring it. Breathe both hands down. Bring your hips into an even level. And now bring your right arm up, twisting. Pashrita Ardha Shandrasana, revolted half moon. Open the chest as much as you can. Bring the knee towards your chest. Slowly start to lift. If you lose the balance, slowly try to grab it. Keep the knee bent. Use your right hand to bring it a little bit closer towards your chest. Open. If you can, you can extend it. Release slowly, slowly, slowly as you move slowly into your warrior three pose. As slow as you can, send the hands forward, send the hands forward very slow. Touch the earth, release the hands down, bring the knee down, and start to open, find opening into your hips. You can leave the back. Keep me, make small circles here. You can incorporate here a little bit of the poses from the last sequence, circling your shoulders back and forth. Release the knee down. Inhale, lift into your lunge, your low lunge. Hips forward, bend the elbows, bring the elbows toward your chest, send the chest forward, swing up, elbows bent, swing forward, last one, inhale up, cactus your arms forward, inhale up, open the chest, this time try to go a little bit deeper, Really opening your chest. Circle your right arm in front, your left hand down into the mat, open your hips. And now grab your back foot if you can with your right hand. Twisting again. If you find the twist, really open the chest, move your toes towards the right side, towards the outside of the mat, opening the chest. We're going to incorporate a last pose here as we move into headstand. So circle your hand forward, extend both legs and move towards the side of your mat. So we're going to find Padatanasana, this is the Padatanasana. Inhale, keep the hands down into the ground. Exhale, release, try to bring the elbows down. Inhale, open. Exhale, bring the elbows down. Try to keep your chest open here. Inhale, extend the arms. Exhale, try to bring the forearms down. Inhale, open. Exhale, forearms down. As you do that, start feeling the sensation into the back of your legs. Inhale. Exhale, forms down. Inhale, exhale, forms down. Inhale, last time. 
forms done. If you're able to find the forms done, both forms done, find that weight into the forms to really stretch the back side of your legs. Now place the hands where the form that elbows were. Inhale, look up. If possible, grab your chins, your toes, or your heels. Inhale, open the chest as we did before. Exhale, try to move all the way down. Let's do it this time again. This time, knees bent to bring your chest, try to bring your chest towards your knees. Inhale, look forward. On the exhale, you're going to extend the legs, but keep the chest as close to the quads, to the legs as possible. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Keep the chest open if you can. Exhale, extend the legs, move down. Last time before we hold. Exhale down. So this one is a pose that you can replace to Sursasana. This can also be your entry to Sursasana and we're going to start trying out here how to get into your head. If you're very nervous about it or if your head is very far away from the floor, we're going to ask you to open your legs as wide. It's not normally what we advise because then you lose the engagement into the legs. But for the purposes of trying to move your weight into your head, we're going to try it today. Okay? So open the legs as much as you need in order to bring your head down. Bring your hands in line with your feet and your head into about 20 centimeters in front. So making a triangle with your hands and your head. Then the only thing we're going to do now is we're going to lift your heels a little bit. So we bring a little bit of the weight into the head and then we move back and open the chest. Head down, bring the heels up and down and open. Three more times. Head down, heels up and down. Open. Last time, heels up, move them down and open. We're just slowly moving the weight into the head, being careful. Move your hands forward, bring your foot all the way to the back, downward facing, downward moving for vinyasa before doing the left side. So bend the knees, look forward, imagine your weight scratching towards the beach, flank, bend the elbows, chaturanga, bring the knees down, lower your forearms, look in between your hands, Swing forward, open the chest. Keeping the knees bent, tuck the toes, move back. Grab your heels, open the chest. Exhale, your forehead towards the knees. Hip up, Kajankasana, opening the back side of your head. Inhale, lift, hands up. Bring it into cactus and then imagine you're swimming forward, downward facing dog. Heels up, keep the heels up. Heels are going to go towards the left side to go into the other side. Left knee is going to go towards the left form, then right form, then extend to the side, holding triangle. Open your right hand up. Feel the stretch into your body, into the left side of your body. Sorry, the right side. Really push into your pinky toe as you open. Release both hands down, level your hips. Feel the stretch into your left IT band. Bring the knee to the chest. Find your um, Three legs up, bend the knee, allow the foot to go towards the other side, towards the right side, allow it to go down, bring the knee towards the elbow or the elbow towards the knee and open. 
knee towards the elbow and then open the knee towards the elbow and then open without the hand or with the hand down slowly start to bring your back foot forward as slow as you can bring it down your left hand is going to stay on the inside circle your right hand in front of your face Extend it side angle. Partial Kalasana. Circle your arm in front of your face. Extend the legs if you need to. Reverse your warrior bend the knee. Extend your leg. Find your Kalasana. Right hand into your right hip. Look at the left side corner of your mat. Slowly start to move your weight forward. Bring your back foot up. Or the Chandrasana, hand up. Your hand stays down into your hip. If your right hand is up, look maybe towards your hand. Find balance. Circle your hand in front of your face. Allow the hand to go down. Reverse it. Reverse your other Chandrasana. Bring the knee towards the chest. And slowly start to lift. Lift. And wait for you. Knee to the chest. Find your twist here. So opposite hand towards the knee. Open the chest. You can stay here or you can extend the leg as much as you can. Bend the knee. Hands into your chest. Slowly move forward, back, forward with your chest, back with your leg. Find a little bit of a trick of a, a warrior three here. Allow the hands to go down or move the hands forward, forward, forward and slowly release that. Bring your hands down, find the space into your hips. If you need, you can make circles with your shoulders or circles with your hips. Allow the knee to go down, lift and get tall, hands up. Bend the elbows, capture the hands, move forward, back into water, hands up. Open the chest, imagine you're kind of going really, really, really deep with your chest forward. Now swing forward, crouch, inhale, open. Cactus your arms, then forward. As you move forward, allow the right hand to go down. Open, circle your hand around, your left hand around. Grab your back foot if you can. Otherwise, try to grab it. Imagine you're trying to grab it, and that's it. Open the chest from here. If you grab the foot, try to really open your foot. Move your toes towards the left side corner of the mat. Slowly release out, and we're adding that pose that we had on the other side. So move your hands towards the opposite side. Looking towards the side, opposite side of the wall. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, bring the elbows down. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, forms down. This time we're gonna do only three. Inhale, forward. Exhale, forms down. Grab your chains your heels or your feet, or maybe high up, it doesn't matter. Inhale, look forward, exhale, bring the chest down. Inhale, look forward, exhale, down. Imagine your leg kind of undulating, spiraling through your chest as you move down. We're going to do the same but this time, trying to grab a little bit more of kind of a space into the legs and moving your head down. So bring your hands in line with your feet. And exhale, you're going to move the head down. Inhale, forward, exhale, head down. Last time, inhale, forward, exhale, head down. Bend the knees, you're going to do the same with the bended knees. 
Try to keep the chest towards your knees. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, extend the legs. Keep the chest towards the knees. Finding you have more space now. Inhale, look forward, bend the knees. Exhale, extend the legs. Bring the chest down. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale, bring the chest back. Catch, maybe touch at the ground. If it doesn't, open your foot a little bit more. We're going to play here with the balance and with the weight into your head. So move forward. Heels up slightly. Inhale, look forward. Head down. Lift the heels. Heels down. Inhale, forward. Exhale, down. Lift the heels. And... We're going to now try to do our first headstand. So walk your hands down, bend the knees, find your feet together, and then find a sitting position. Okay? So in order to play with headstand, again, there's a lot of recommendations about uh, when it's safe to move into headstand. So it's not safe to move into headstand if you're doing your period, uh, although there is different opinions about it. What I find personally in my body is that um, it kind of slows the process of my period. But uh, for example, for women in menopause, what I found is that a lot of them benefit that it also correlates with their hormonal cycle. So if it doesn't feel right, it just, you know, don't do it. If it feels like you're getting a headache, if it feels like there's a lot of weight into your body, just don't do it. Just don't do it. That's it. Um, you're finding, you're trying to find kind of new ways of opening into your body when you're doing asanas. It's not about finding pain. It's not about finding suffering. It's about finding the spaces to move into a new way of looking at the world in a comfortable way, in a way that you feel nice inside your body. So the other thing is if you have glaucoma, high blood pressure, diabetes, maybe not the best person. So what happens when you are in those situations and headstand is not for you, but you still want to do an inversion? We're, I'm going to show you another inversion that is better uh, during those times. But if you really want to try to put that weight into your back, into your, into your neck and start to kind of strengthen your neck, really good pose is Chachankasana, which we learned and that's the reason I put it today. But Chachankasana, you're going to do it this time with the knees together. Bring the toes down, come into toe pose. Grab the heels, open the chest, really open the chest. Then as you move forward, you're gonna start crouching, really, really making a circle with your uh, spine. Bring the forehead down as close to the knees. If you can, really touch knees with your forehead. Then open, bring your heels up. And feel how the arms, get a nice stretch, your shoulders get a nice stretch, but also the spine and your forehead, uh, sorry, the, uh, the spine and your neck, the back of your neck. Breathe here. And stay there. That can be your sursasana. That's all. You can stay here in this pose for as long as you need to. But if you're still curious about Headstand, so slowly release, come up on top of the toes. I'm going to show you the kind of the safe ways to move into headstand. And this is the way I normally practice it with my daughter, with Gabby. Unfortunately, today is, is not feeling that well, so she will not be blessed. So, um, kind of ways that you're going to sursasana into headstand. The, there is different ways of moving into sursasana. The one we were doing before with hands uh, down, it's called a tripod headstand or tripod sursasana. It requires a lot more engagement into your shoulder, into your elbows. I find it easier. It was the way I learned it, but I know it's the way I learned it because it was really very strong into my arms. We're going to learn the first way, then tripod headstand, and then we're going to see how we do it to, against the wall. So, forearms down, you're going to make sure that your forearms are not kind of more open than your shoulders. For that, you're going to 
bring your hands against opposite elbows and really feel that you're putting the weight there so your elbows do not move away. What happens with a lot of people doing headstand is that their forearms start to kind of open because they don't have the kind of they don't have the strength to keep the elbows down. So really feel about really pushing those elbows where they have where they are. It's really important. The whole most of the weight is going to go into your elbows. And it's going to be very balanced if it really keeps that position there. Now, hands forward. You're going to interlace your fingers or you're going to cock your right hand inside your left or your left hand inside your front. Try the different ways. I tried them in every way until I found mine. Mine is more my right hand cocking into my left. So, now, place the top of the head down into the mat, very close to your hands, and now push the back of the head into the hands, into the cupping hands or into the interlacing hands. Yeah. And start extending the legs, pushing the weight or moving the weight into your head. And find the weight of the body into the real top of your head, so try to find it. What I kind of, the way I found it is by opening my eyes and look, making sure that I can see kind of it straight into the back. So I can see kind of in line, a horizontal line to the back. Keep the legs straight. That is enough if you're new for your headstand. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you're just going to walk your feet a little bit closer a little bit closer, a little bit closer to your hips actually kind of start to stay, start to go on top of your forearms and top of your shoulders. Now here, you can lift one leg up. Release down, maybe the other leg up. Release it down, maybe one leg up and then the other leg up. And that is kind of the beginning pose of your headstand. And some people, Gabby, for example, was here for about two months. She couldn't move from here. So if you're able to go here with your knees bent, stay there, enjoy it, and release that. I'm gonna release a little bit of pressure here. So extend the arms, pour her forehead down before we try a little bit more. Now about the balance. So this is the way I'm going to ask you to move into your into your heads and by slowly moving the weight forward, weight forward until your own body lifts you up. What happens if the issue is fear, which is the issue with a lot of people? So if the issue is fear, find the wall. And you can also find like I, I do a lot of my inversions with Gabby. And it's a good way of gaining trust with your little ones. So try I'll do it today, tomorrow with her. But if you don't have no one to practice with when you're in the house at all, walls are very good uh, supporting uh, partners for yoga. So same thing, you're going to measure your hands, make sure your elbows to stay put, hands forward, cup your hands, bring kind of the back of your head in that cup, really push against that cup, then Feel the weight into the top of your head. Once again, leave the foot, leave the foot, leave the foot, and walk until you kind of walk more. Some people are going to find is that as they walk a little bit closer, their feet are going to lift on their own. This is kind of the entrance you really want. But if you're not there, what you're going to do is again walk, 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 bring your right knee into the chest, release it, left knee into the chest, release it, right knee into the chest, left foot for a while, and then because the wall is there, if you fall back, then you're going to find the wall there. 
Then maybe you put the tippy toes against the head and against the wall, lift one leg up, keep the other one against the wall. Avoid kind of fighting the buttocks down into the wall. Use your tippy toes instead. Maybe lift the other leg up. Again, maybe try both legs up. To understand. Knees into the chest first, release, and find your child's pose first before moving somewhere else. So this is your entrance against the wall. Really, and it's really, really important for me that when you try this, you move slowly. And then you start to feel how the weight distributes between your forearms and your, the top of your head, okay? It's very normal to feel a bit dizzy after this. Um, so what I would recommend is, especially at the beginning when you're doing headstands on your own, spend a lot of time down into your child's pose after you do them. I'll show you one more way to go into your headstand, and then we're going to, to move into other poses and into kind of ways of doing headstand without doing headstand or getting the same benefits. So the second one is the one we already saw is your tripod hands. And so you're going to place your hands as wide as the shoulders. It's very important they're as wide as the shoulders. For people who have issues with the flexibility into their shoulders, what I recommend is to slightly move your hands outward. So your uh, index finger is pointing forward, but the rest of the fingers are kind of moving towards the side of the wall. Now, you're going to try to make an imaginary triangle with your mind and put the head on the top of that triangle. Then lift the heels, lift the heels, oh, sorry, lift the legs, lift the hips, extend the legs, and then push the head, the chest, or push the weight forward. This has a lot, with this posture, it feels that the weight is a lot more into my head. So a lot of people find it more difficult but it's sometimes easier to go into the pose from here. So you're going to bring your right knee to your right elbow, and you're going to lift. Release it down, left knee, left elbow, up. Maybe both knees are going to find the elbows, and then slowly, 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 you're going to lift. It's like a crow if you have fallen down. It's the same as a crow. Then maybe from here, you're gonna push into your core. For this pose, you really need a strong core. Bring the knees into the chest. Extend the legs up. Knees down. Foot down. Knees down. And child's pose. You can do this pose against the wall. Same thing. Um, what you could do, which unfortunately don't have here, is you can put a block or a book in between your hands, then keep pushing against that. So you find kind of a lot of engagement into your arms, or you can put um, a belt around your arms and do it. I kind of don't like the use of the belt, despite a lot of teachers kind of encourage it, it's because I've seen a lot of people going down from their success and this point they have the belt, then getting tangled into it, then having issues into their neck. So I'd rather do it very slowly without any props. And then when you find it, you know that you find it safer. The same for a lot of props that exist right in the market where you don't have to put the kind of the head on the top and it gives you the impression of a, of a headstand. It's good because it gives you the inversion. I don't find it that useful in kind of my asana practice because Despite it gives you the sensation of the pose, it doesn't really give you the intelligence on how to move into headstand eventually or how to move safely into the rest of the inversions. Okay? So you just keep trying the same thing with this one against the wall. Get really close to the wall, make your triangle. Move the knees very close. Lift the knee like you were falling kind of crow. Lift, 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 lift. 
you always have to feel that your weight is a little bit more towards the back in order to be into a line. Then knees down, knees down. Release and lift. Okay? And even if you're just going here, even if you're just walking here, this is great. This is going to give you strength into your neck. It's a good pose. I find it a good pose to go and avoid this crunching because we're all time doing this with the palms. So because it's really strengthening the neck, it allows you kind of that opening that we normally don't have. So in order to close down and give you poses that you may do when you kind of do your headstand, the one that I found the best is a lava sarvagasana or handle pose. Um, it is a pose that is quite safe for everyone. Same thing with people with high blood pressure. Uh, bringing the legs up it may not be the best because it's going to kind of bring or increase your high blood pressure. But option one, a very simple one, is use heads up, uh, legs up. This pose works for migraines. This works. Uh, this uh, pose works when you're falling. You're really trying to. Uh, or finding a very hard time falling asleep. We did it before. And one of the things that I learned recently into an Ayurveda practice that I'm doing with a great, great teacher that I also put the link into and primer is to push the heels up. So you can just try it. Really push the heels up. And that's it. That is your inversion. You're getting a bit of the benefit of kind of the flowing blood down into your body, reversing and helping the body to kind of clean from the legs, but in a very safe way. And this could be enough for your inversion practice. You go on to go a little bit deeper and you are not kind of, you don't have any of the medical conditions that I've mentioned, you move back, into your plow, so you move your legs back as close to your uh, to the back floor as you can. Very slowly bring the forearms together, so maybe interlace the hands first, move the shoulders underneath, really move the shoulders under, feel that you are really on the top of the shoulder blades. And slowly move the hands into your um, back, your lower back, your forearms down. One by one, all the two together, better. Both legs up, Slamba Sarvagasana. Candle rose. And I need something now that I always say my students not to do, so I'm going to actually acknowledge it and tell you. Do never look to the sides. Keep your eyes into your toes. Especially when you're teaching it online or you're teaching it to a class, your students tend to look at you. So don't. Keep the neck into a safe position, not looking side to side. This is a great pose as well for your neck. It's going to really open your neck. You can stay here for as long as you need, you want. There's a lot of modifications here so you don't get bored. If you have that tendency of a monkey mind, you can extend one leg, keep one leg down, the other up, then change. You can bicycle your legs, which you used to love when I started my practice. Bicycle. You can bring Bend both knees, bring one knee toward the forehead and the other foot towards the back, and then change. And if you have your lotus, you can go into your lotus. Lots of modifications here. If you want to go out of Shalamba Sarvagasana, bring your knees towards your forehead. 
I really like when I put the knees into the forehead. Maybe I use it to massage a little bit my forehead. I make little circles. Feels like a, a buzzer so you bring up. But without anything, without putting anything uh, kind of funny into your body. Now, maybe you can bring your knees on either side of your head. Maybe they go down or not. Mine don't go down, that's okay. And slowly, really slowly, extend the arms, extend the legs. And you're going to feel how your spine undulates slowly into the mat. So vertebra by vertebra, we're going to move your spine down, keep the neck strongly grounded into the mat. Strongly grounded, strongly grounded, strongly grounded. Release your legs as slow as you can. As you start to release the legs down, bring your hands underneath your buttocks. As the legs touch down, use your forearms to lift your chest. Head moves to the back. Fish pose. If you open the knee, the, the neck on the opposite side, opening the front neck. Great pose for those who spend a lot of time in their phones, which is basically everyone now. Fish pose. Couple of modifications, you can bring your knees and your legs up. You can bring your hands up and legs up. If you were into your lotus, you can come here from your lotus. Slowly release. Push the forearms strongly into the mat. Lift, release the head, bring the chin into the chest, and release that. And we're ready for our Shavasana. So today we're going to do a little bit deeper in Shavasana. This Shavasana is the Shavasana that I pull uh, starting to wake up. So it's, it's one of the multiple sequences that I use when I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling really tired despite having this like well uh, and I kind of need to move my spine to start to refresh. What you're going to do is you're going to bring your feet as wide as a mat. If you're in bed, you don't have a mat. You're going to bring your feet as wide, uh, kind of a little bit wider than your hips. You're going to bring the heels, the, sorry, the knees towards each other. So imagine you're just waking up from bed. Feet separated, knees together. We're going to start by strongly pushing your sacral your sacrum into the mat, kind of your lower back, that bone that goes just at the end of your lower back, the beginning of your feet. Really keep it pushing down on the inhale, release. Now, once again, push your sacrum down and release. Last time, push the sacrum down, release. Now, you're going to feel like you're pushing the center of your chest down and your sacrum, and release. Sacrum and center of your heart down, and release. Sacrum and center of your heart down and release. Now, say sacrum, center of your heart and head, kind of the neck. Feel that you're pushing the back of the neck strongly into the mat. So, neck first, 
the middle of the chest and sacrum. That's going to change your voice. It's going to make you sound a little bit funny. Release. Back of the neck strongly pressing into the mat. Back of your chest, upper back, and your sacrum. Last time, back of the neck, sacrum, middle of your chest, and release. Now we're going to incorporate the feet. This comes from Megan Curry. So you're going to strongly move, imagine you're bringing your foot towards your buttocks, and your buttocks towards your foot. Bring the knees towards the buttocks, the buttocks towards your foot. Your neck presses down into the mat. Your, the middle of your chest presses down into the mat. Your sacrum presses down your feet again. And then really imagine everything kind of contracting or like pushing inward. Release. One more time. Foot towards the buttocks, buttocks towards the foot. Back of the head, chest, sacrum. And release. And finally, we're going to incorporate a little bit of spine kind of undulations here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to once again, top of the neck or back of the neck down, strongly pressing, foot towards your glutes, sacrum down, back of the head down, back of your chest down. Then as you release, you're going to Open the chest, press the top of the head down, still press the knees or press the foot towards your heels, towards your glutes, and make a small kind of a space into your spine. Now reverse it. Really press the top of your head, the top of the back of your neck, the back of your, of your chest, your sacrum, your feet towards your glutes, and then open and make a circle. So it's an undulation around your lower back, kind of really focusing on pressing your lower back down and then opening it. So you start with about five formulations of this, say wake up. Now, on the next, as I do five, I start to lift my hips, then make the undulations with the hips up, keeping the knees together at the back, Really small undulations. So you're going to, once again, feel your press in the chest, move the hips up slightly, opening the chest, opening the hips, go into your kind of half wheel. Now push the chest down to push the sacrum down, glutes down, release. Opposite. Open the chest, lift the hips, and stretch the legs, move into half bridge, top of the chest, middle of the chest, lower back, glutes, knees together. Two more times. Both the chest, since the, since the waist, it's a few long, imagine you're like, getting really slim into your, into your waist. Hips up, hips forward. Extend the legs. Thoracic spine down. Your lower back down. Your glutes down. Your knees into the chest. And last time. Pop it, 
Lift the hips, then stretch the hips up. Spine vertebra by vertebra going down. And release. Keep the feet as wide open as they are. Bring your right foot into your right, into your left knee and allow both knees to go towards the right side. A small twist here. Release, both feet move as wide as they might, knees together, this time left knee goes into the right, uh, left foot goes into the right knee and twist to the other side. A pretty, really small twist. Return, same thing on the other side. This time you're going to bring your right, your left foot in line or kind of, yeah, in line with your glutes. Other leg crosses. Bring the knees towards your chest. Maybe grab your chin, bring your foot towards your chest. Find the space into your hips. Keep the chest, keep the chin towards your chest or your knees towards your chest and allow the body to move towards the right side. The twist is getting a little bit deeper. Use the foot to move the knee down, the left knee down. Look towards your left side. And change. Knees towards the chest. Other foot in the middle. Grab the chin. Move the chin towards your chest. Move the foot towards your chest. And allow them to move all the way to the side. Getting your twist a little bit deeper. Look towards the right. Return to center. Both knees meet. This time you're going to move towards the right or the left. Whatever feels better. Make a small kind of crunching sensation here. Use your hands to lift yourself up slowly. Find your sitting position. And feel any change into your body. Feel your spine getting long. Normally that's the way I kind of wake up. I take about five minutes to wake up to move my spine. Sit into my bed, take about one minute to use focusing on what I have to do during the day. If I'm not running to school or doing something funny, so if I can have the time I do this. Bring your hands into your chest and open. Really feel all the opening of the chest that you have done during these last an hour and a half. Hands into your forehead. Look up. Feel the opening onto your neck. Hands into your mouth and move your chin towards your chest. Feel the opening into your neck through the back. And slowly move forward and down and release everything down. Thank you for coming to the class. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope this gave you kind of a bit of ways of moving into your headstand safely or, you know, finding something else to do that is not your headstand and, and that can help you. Have a beautiful weekend. Have a beautiful week. Bye.